Well, the supercharger is finally permanently on. No more taking off this stupid hunk and carrying it to the bench to work on it and get things done. It is finally done and I have fuel rails and all I gotta do left is the little things, which take a lot of work. So, here's the intake. I'll show you what it looks like. Pretty much bolted on. Um, this nipple is for the PCV and I'll run it to a catch can. And then you can see the piping coming out there. If I had my light handy, I'd sh show you guys. I can't remember what I did with it. And then, the only thing I have to get is the thing to do with something for the fuel, to connect the fuel rail. And that's about it. And these fuel rails, you can see where the welds are. I ground them down on the other side, but I was lazy. And it's cold outside, so I didn't do it on this side. But they're just billet LSA fuel rails that I bought on eBay. And I just welded them. And, well, I didn't weld them. My stepdad welded them, because that's what he does. I uh, had him weld them, and he welded them, and I swatched, and we cut them, measured them, and made them fit. So, they line up perfect now, and this is the hardest part to find with the fuel rails, because nobody wants to make them, nobody wants to make money and make them, I guess. I know it's not something that's easy to make time to make them, and, you know, how many, who knows how many people buy them. So these were th these cost me 320 bucks, coming with everything you need. All you gotta do is cut them and weld them. And then, um, so since that's done, I ran my wires under there, and this is still free, so you could see. Hopefully, well, it's hard to see, but it opens up the butterfly still, nice and free. Um, I'm hoping I don't have any leaks or anything because this thing was actually really hard to get on here since I don't really have room up top I kind of just lift it and set it on. I had to kind of slide it so you had to be careful with the gaskets. Um, I can't remember if this was in my last video or not but that is just an extra pulley to get some more belt wrap around everything. Got to put on my alternator still. Might have to extend a few more wires and do the wires for my intake air temp sensor right here and block off those vacuum ports. I gotta run my hoses to the tank. And the tank to the pump is down there. I already got that hose and then I gotta mount my heat exchanger which is gonna go right here. And don't mind my garage but this is the heat exchanger. It's gonna fit perfectly right there. I gotta make some brackets for it and then we'll put the bumper back on. What else? Here's the line I did. Go the cross. And then all I gotta figure out is what I'm gonna do back there. I have not decided yet. I might do a 90. Or I might do two 180, two uh, 180s, honestly. Because I could do one facing back to the front of the vehicle, and then from that to the back of the vehicle. And then that will hook this up pretty well, I would say. This is a 6AN. I need an 8, so I gotta get a new push connect. Um, I think it's a 3 8 to push connect you can find on online. I gotta finish bolting down the supercharger. I lost some bolts through all this whole process, and so I gotta go get some more at the hardware store. Um, keep cleaning up the wiring, a couple more hoses, and I gotta put in my dipstick as well, which hopefully that's gonna fit. I did not think, well, I thought about it, but I didn't think I was gonna run into issues, so hopefully I'm correct on that. But, yeah, once the alternator's on, I think this thing going to look pretty clean because, you know, it doesn't really look factory, but it doesn't look, you know, like it's been, ma you know, chopped up. Once I finish wrapping all those wires and stuff, which I have been, I just uh, want to get the supercharger on first. Make sure everything lines up and fits, and so I can bolt it down. Um, I gotta go find a belt this weekend, which should be pretty easy. I'll just have to measure it, and... Find a tune. I haven't decided who I'm going to have tune it. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. Um, I haven't decided who to go with. Lots of options out there, but I want someone that's really good and that's not going to kill me on the price. I might go to my OG guy that has tuned most of my vehicles. Well, he's tuned my truck back there multiple times. Uh, you can see it. And it does really well, but 
I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. I have injector clinic, 72 pound injectors, um, 320 liter per hour fuel pump, or 340 liter per hour fuel pump. That should put me at least to 500, no problem. Um, stock fuel lines other than the fuel rails. I still, oh, electric fan, stock headers with cats still on there. Yes, cats are still on there because it's illegal to cut them out, and I don't want to do that. Um, so I think we'll go, we'll find an all wheel drive dyno, but I'm thinking I at least will make 550 on the stock pulley. I gotta fill this thing with fluid, so I can't forget to do that. That's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Pretty sure uh, it should be really good. And it will make a lot of power, I hope. That's the plan. Not a lot of power, but a lot of torque. So I could tow with it. I've been so eager to get this thing driving again. Just because it's been a long process. But yeah, this thing's super tall. So if anyone's thinking about doing this, look how tall it is. I had to cut into my cow. I'll still have windshield wipers. I've already tested that. And so I just want you guys to know that it will you need a very tall cow to fit this. Or firewall. I think the trucks will clear just fine, but these SUVs, this is pretty much a trailblazer. Um, they are tight fit, so just be careful. If you want to do this, you know you're going to have to cut that. And any other things, fuel roll is non-existent. You're going to have to make your own or hopefully find some used parts. I've been looking forever, never found any, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to wait any longer. There's a lot of people out there willing to sell you their used ones that are scams. Um, don't fall for that. So make sure you get pictures and it's a legit person. And that's about it. I know this isn't going to breathe perfectly because it's small intake, but that's okay. I just, you know, I want something that's going to be reliable. I'm not looking for maximum efficiency and power. It's just something that's going to be fun. And that you know, honestly should, you know, take care of everything that I'm wanting. I do have a built transmission for this eventually when this one goes out. Who knows how long this engine is going to last. I don't know how many miles are on it. It's a remanufactured one from... I'm pretty sure it's a remanufactured one from LKQ. It was stamped with LKQ everywhere when I swapped the heads. Did the DOD delete. It has an LS9 cam. New oil pump. Yeah, very nervous to get this thing started. But <sighs> hopefully it just runs and I have no issues. So... We're just going to have to find out and see. But yeah, it was a huge pain to do this all. If it was me and I did this all over again, I'd probably go something that just bolts on. Yeah, you're going to spend a lot of money, but you're going to spend a lot of money doing this. Um, but it's the cool factor that I like. You're not going to, I'm probably going to be the only one in Idaho with this supercharger for the next, you know, at least a few months until someone else does it. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Not a lot of people are, you know, not a lot compared to LSA swaps, you know. So, it will be cool. It will be definitely a head turner. And it should be really reliable. With, in quotations, at least. Should be. Who knows. I always have reliability issues, it seems like. But, I'm excited to get this thing going. It's going to sound good. Should make good power. Should have a lot of air codes because that's what just happens when you get done doing things. But I think I hit all my, I think I get, got everything on the checklist done. Hopefully I don't have any issues. So cross your guys' fingers and hopefully in the next video we'll see a belt on it, alternator, supercharger mounted on, all this done. And possibly it should be running at least for a start or it should be, it should have been running but I had a small issue. It might be at that point as well. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry I'm not recording me working on it. It's just too cold out here. It's like 6 degrees, so. And it's hard to hold a camera and the battery dies super fast. So, this is what you guys get for now. But once we go to the dyno, I'll actually record it. And um, we'll see what it makes. Maybe it'll make more than 500. It's going to be on pump gas. But maybe it won't. And I might add water mat down the line. We'll see. I gotta, we gotta check these intake air temps and see how hot they get in the summer, especially towing. They get super hot. I might throw some uh, water methanol in there just to help it. 
But if it, if it runs fine and I have no issues, then this is what it's going to be. And this is how it's going to sit for the next, until this thing doesn't keep going. But I appreciate all you guys subscribing. I've been actually getting a lot more subscribers lately. So that's a good sign. And I do this not for me, but for you guys. So if you ever go down this route, you're going to, you know, it's going to take some work. It's not going to be a direct bolt on. The adapters are nice, though. I didn't have any issues with the Mac Daddy adapter, so shout out to them because everything lined up perfectly. I just wish they were a little cheaper, but look, can't complain. They kind of own the market right now since not there's only one other company making them right now, and they're also about the same price, so you're not going to be saving any money. And you, I think the Mac Daddy ones are slightly shorter, so I would go with them if you're having going to have clearance issues. You could do the LSA fuel rails, find a welder, have them cut and welded. Um, honestly, that was the easiest task. That was easy. And don't mind my red spark plugs, wires. They look stupid, but I gotta find some. O buy, go buy some OEM ones. That was just uh, these are brand new for like a, a truck. But I was like, hey, I might as well just use them on this instead of go buy new ones. But yeah, I think I'm into this thing probably about $2,700 now. Maybe a little less with the fuel rails. But that includes, you know, just the supercharger. I'll add it up at the last video and let you guys know what it cost me. But I'm I'm into it, you know, at least just with the supercharger kit, not doing any engine work, at least two grand, maybe less, which is a great deal for a supercharger, you know, for a whole supercharger kit. But that doesn't count all the time I've been out here working on it in the cold freezing. But it's kind of fun at the same time. So that's okay. Well, I'm kind of just rambling on. I'm sure no one wants to listen to me. And then if you have made it this far in this video, good job. I'm proud of you guys. Well, thanks for watching. And next video, this thing should be running.